Hello and welcome back to Addicted to Angling. Look at this, eh? Back on the beach, back where really, in reality, my second home is. You know, this is my forte, this is what I really love to do, but I haven't been out doing it for quite a while. Don't know why, just lost the bug, had an urge to come out today. It's early spring, it's March. I'm down at a place called Shingle Street in Suffolk, and the tides are fairly small. Sea is calm, it's absolutely beautiful, and that to me screams form back rays. Now this mark is well known in Suffolk as a good form back uh, ray mark. They come in here, there's a river mouth just down to my, behind where I am. They go down there to lay their purses and they congregate in this bay before they go down there to feed up and basically get ready to go and lay the purses. Now this is a place where you can pick up double figure rays. You can get some absolute stonkers here. Today, who knows what's gonna happen. I may catch, I may not catch. I'll go through all my baits later, my rigs, everything with you. It's low tide right now. I'm gonna fish up to high, see if it produces. And who knows, we may get a flappy, spiky thing on the beach and I may get my first ray of 2024. Stay tuned to see what happens in the session. Right, so first cast, gonna reel them in. Soak time of around about 40 minutes. When I'm ray fishing, because you're using slightly bigger baits. Did have a few little rattles. I'm not gonna lie, look like crabs or whiten. But we will see what it is. Water's still very low. You can feel it catching on the uh, ledges as we're coming up. This one was close in. Left hand rod, I'm fishing fairly close in. Lump of squid on this, just plonking it out. You never know, there could be a bass around. When the water gets a bit higher in here, the rays do run close in. I've had them. Ah, uh, crabby McCrab crab. I've had them more or less right underneath my rod tip in there. And that's what the rattles were. Get off my snood, you little blighter. That's what the rattles were in there, it was crabs. Get your bloody claw off my bloody bait. So it just shows us warming up. Crab activity is obviously going to be fairly high, but it hasn't done much damage to the bait. So that's always a bonus. It's got my bloody hand. Ow. I will unhook him and unravel him. Right, that's one crab off. Like I say, close in. Fishing little bits of squid. Never know what could come along. Like I say, they do come, they don't, do run right underneath the rod tips in here. This one here, I'm fishing further out. Squid and bluey on this. This one had a couple of little rattles as well, so we'll see if there's any more crabs on it. Water's actually not a bad colour to it today. Which could mean, as the tide floods, we might get a doggy dog fest today. Dogs do come on in the daytime in coloured water. You don't really see them much in clear water. But even a doggy will be welcome today. No, a lot of people don't like doggies. I don't actually mind them. Unless they're in plague proportions and you're fishing for rays and you're getting like dog after dog. But, Dogs and rays, both from the shark family. And in my experience in the past, if you start catching dogs and the weather's perfect for rays, the Raimondos will not be far behind. Well, there we go, first cast, won't expect too much. Like I say, 40 minute soak time. It's now roughly around about 20 past 10. I'm expecting if we get anything, probably to see the fish come on from about midday onwards, halfway up top of tide, halfway up flood tide, but we'll see. It's a good sign, no little rattles and stuff like that, like I say. Obviously could just be crabs, 
but we'll crack on and let's see if we can pull ourselves right out of it. Well, that's the rods out for the second cast. It's coming up to 11 o'clock, hour before halfway up the uh, tide. Like I say, midway up tide, I reckon we could start seeing some fish. That's normally when this face, uh, place starts producing. I've had fish here over low before, not really many. I just wanted to get here early and uh, relax, to be honest, because it's such a nice day. I woke up, I was like, sod it, I'm going to go out, get down there early. But I'm going to do the standard thing now, rigs, both rods, single hook pulley rigs, consisting of six ounce lead to a Gemini splashdown, 80 pound rig body, swivel to 20 pound snood now on my pulley rigs people spend their money on pulley beads there's no need swivels do exactly the same job swivels if anything are better than pulley beads in my eyes but that's just my own personal opinion never use pulley beads always use swivels hook wise single free o Sea glow, Cato hook, sharp as you like, strong hook. I've had some great fish on these. And like I say, I'm loading them up inside line, probably fishing at about 40 yards. That's got just a single bit of squid on it. Anything can pick up on that, you know, just uh, could get rays come through close in, bass, pouting, whiting. That's more of like a species rod close in. Still got a free hour on it, so I'm not really scratching. And the further rod, squid and bluey. Unwashed squid always, never using the calamari stuff. And I'm probably putting that about 70, 80 yards. Not hammering it out, you know. It's 70, 80 yards is optimal casting distance. You know, you see people on the internet, on YouTube, sitting there saying, I'm fishing a distance, 150, 200 yards. No, they're not. Unless they're a tournament caster who's top of their game, you're not putting a bait 150, 200 yards. Average anglers fishing at 80 to 100 yards. That is, that's what I'd say 90% of anglers are fishing at if you see them on the beach and they can just do a nice overhead thump. You know, tournament anglers, yes, will put a bait out a long way, but bait causes a lot of drag and it does slow down cast. So yeah, when you see these people for saying they're fishing 150, 200 yards, they're not. So don't ever sit there and think to yourself, I can't hit that, oh, I shouldn't fish there because they're not fishing at that distance. Trust me. Trust me. Right, bait-wise. Unwashed squid, dirty, laligo. Calamari, I hate the calamari, the bleach unwashed stuff. It takes all the scent out. If you're going fishing, try and get unwashed squid. It's got all the dirty goodness in it. Leave the heads on, of course, because the heads is where the ink is kept. The head is where a lot of the juices are. You know, don't a lot of people discard the heads and use the um, use the for what it's called flank of the squid. Good bait, don't get me wrong, but the head is an awesome bait. I've had big fish on just a head, a single head with the guts wrapped on and flicked out. Rays, cod, you name it, they'll take it. And of course, Atlantic Sauri, aka Bluey. Why is it called Bluey? Well, because it's blue, of course. Greasy, oily, absolutely fantastic bait with that. When I wrap it on, I'll show you my bait later. I wrap it with the flesh on the outside. So I'll put the skin against the squid and wrap the flesh on the outside. You're wrapping it, if you wrap it the other way around, a lot of the juices are being trapped against the uh, squid. But as it goes down, the water pressure, water runs over, it'll push that more together and the juices won't leak out as much. You flip it over, have the flesh out, all them juices are getting dragged out. You've got a lot more scent in the water. You're attracting a lot more fish. It won't last as long, but on a small tide like today, I just reeled that rod in 40 minutes after I cast it out. My hands were still greasy and oily. There's still so much flavour in there after 40 minutes, even with the flesh out. So top tip of the day, if you're using any fish bait, flesh side out on the squid, wrap it up all the juices will come out right like i say second cast out i'm going to kick back relax and hopefully them tips will start twitching soon that's the second cast in nothing on the second cast it's now coming up to 20 to 12 so we're nearly halfway up top of the tide so now is the time where i'm really going to start focusing on the fishing just show you my bait up quickly that is all i use for ray single hook bluey I like to call it riding piggyback on a chunk of dirty squid, like you see, flesh out on that. And that will go through the water, uh, go through the air streamlined, hit the water. And when it hits, this bit here lifts up, unclips, 
and then the bait is floating around on the bottom. Right, I'm going to get this second rod out, like I say. This one's going to go out a little bit further than the other one. No crazy casting, no I mean, pendulum style or attempt at a pendulum. Just a simple overhead thump. Wind has swung massively at the minute. It's swung from westerly. I would have said it's now going more southwest, which isn't putting too much of a chop on the water. It's all you need here. Onto the clay like that. It's not putting too much chop on the water. It's getting a bit cloudier now as well. It's chilled up a little bit. But it's not affecting it too much because it's still a light wind. I'd have said it's a maximum, probably about eight or nine mile an hour. You can just feel it gradually increasing though. So I reckon as we hit top of tide, it may well get a little bit more blustery, but at the minute it's absolutely fantastic. Still beautiful, still perfect. Not much chop on the water. Not as calm as it was. It was like an oil slick earlier at low tide, but there you go, it changes. But that's not gonna make much of a difference at all. And the tide's increasing, it's slowly creeping up. So chances are fish will come on the feed soon. Like I say, maybe see a doggy because the water's colored. But a form back's what I'm after. And hopefully a form back is what I'll get. Well, that's the baits in. Let's see what happens. Stephen, is that you, Stephen? My little mate's just come to join me. Old Stephen Seagull, look at him. See if I can get him any closer. Here, boy, come on. I wonder if I can feed him by hand. What's this? What's this? Come on. Come on. Here, boy. That is not interested. Smelly thing. You ever caught a seagull? I have. Wrapped in the line, reeled it in. Absolutely evil little buggers. Sea chickens are the nastiest, evilest birds I think I ever know. Yeah, I'm talking about you, mate. I am talking about you. They will try and peck your eyes out. They will try and snap at your hands and they absolutely stink. You, Stephen, need a bath. So here we have it. First fish of the day was a dogfish, as you can probably tell from the uh, last little bit I did. Did a really great piece on camera about it, reeling it in, and my microphone didn't turn on, which is sod's law really. But yep, there we go, doggy first cast. 
Can't grumble about that at all. A fish is a fish. I actually quite like doggies. Um, yes, we do get them in plague proportions down here. Sometimes when you're fishing for other species, they can be an absolute nightmare. But it's a fish on an otherwise hard day. And if you look at that, look at the eyes. They're absolutely beautiful fish. So there we go. First one. Doggy, doggy, woof, woof. Let's crack on. See what else happens in the video. Well, that right hand rod's been soaking now for about 40 minutes. Really, it's come to one o'clock, as you would have seen previously. <laughs> Did have a doggy, but unfortunately, uh, my microphone decided to turn itself off as I was uh, doing the video for it. So you got a little bit of the video there with me doing a little bit of a voiceover on it. Left hand rod, I've put Bluey on now as well. I'm putting that out a little bit further. Was getting nothing close in. Obviously had the dog out on the rod that's further out there. And I put Bluey on there, like I say, just to give it a little bit more of a traction because it's now coming up to the Ray sort of time, to be honest with you. We've gone past halfway up high. And if there's rays about, they should be thinking about feeding soon. Water's got a lovely color on it. That wind has swung yet again. It's coming straight down the beach now, which is making for a little bit of a chillier day. However, it is still, oh, and that is why I didn't get a dog. Sea locust. Didn't even see the bite on that. Bloody things. Don't get me wrong, fish is a fish, but sea locusts are not what I am here to catch. I'm here to get a slack liner or a nice pull round from a Raimondo. Don't get me wrong. Not exactly a bad size sea locust. Obviously, when I say sea locust, I'm talking about the humble whiting. Don't get me wrong, pretty fish and they taste absolutely fantastic, but it's not a ray, it's not what I want. And if they're about, hopefully we won't get plagued by them if they start coming on as the tide rises. But fish is a fish. There's a whiting, second fish of the day. Let's get another bait out, let's see what happens. Well, it's coming up to about two o'clock. It's an hour before high. And to be honest with you, it's a little bit disappointing. I've had one doggy, one white and so far. Colour in the water with March being the way it is and the small tides. I was expecting or hoping for a ray by now. But we'll see. There's not been much movement on the rod tips at all. I obviously saw the bite for the doggy. Didn't even see the bite for the ray. I've had a couple of little white and rattles, which to me would say they're just grabbing the bait. But High tides at three, probably stay till about half past three, see what happens. There's got to be a ray out there, there really has. But let's get this other rod out, let's see, see if we can get something on it. The wind, like I say, as the tide's flooding, the wind is increasing. It's yet again switched a lot more high, a lot more uh, onshore. Hell of a lot more onshore. It's uh, picking up as well, which I wasn't expecting it to do, to be honest with you. Forecast was saying eight to nine all day. I'd say that's probably more around about, not 10, probably, probably gusting up to about 12, something like that. Obviously, with the wind picking up, it is a little bit more chilly now, but it's still lovely sitting in the sun. But that's that rod out. Let's see what it does. Let's see if it can produce. Really hoping that there's a, a ray come along. Well, that left hand rod's been out about three minutes. That's rattling already. The right hand rod has now moved more into a white and rattle. So I'm gonna wind the right hand rod in. See if there's anything on there. No doubt there's a white and hanging on the end. And then I say the left hand rod as well, that keeps jingle jangling. So I reckon the white gonna come along because it's getting near high, which is a bit of a shame. I was hoping we wouldn't see any today, to be honest with you. I don't even know if there's anything there, to be honest with you. Might be. No weight.
Very strange. Unless they're just grabbing the bait and can't actually get it inside them. Let's have a look, where are you? Ah, nil point. Problem is, when you're ray fishing and you've got white and grabbing the bait and stuff like that, you want to get that white in and you want to get that bait straight out of the water as quick as possible. Because, Stephen, get away from my stuff. Because you don't want a white and hang on, hang on, on the end. Because, yeah, don't get me wrong, I've seen pictures of rays that have took white and. Is that gonna go? Is that gonna rattle? I've seen pictures of rays that take white and you know, hooked on, but they're not really live bait feeders, to be honest with you. If it was a bass or something, or big cod, you know, you'd leave that white on the end if you're fishing a stinger rig. But that's a totally different video altogether. Right, I'm gonna get this rebaited out, get it out as quick as I can. If that left hand rod keeps jangling, I'll uh, get that in as well, see if there's a white on the end of it. Keep fishing for rays, got an hour before high. Still can produce, still could produce. Let's keep trying. Well, that little left hand rod kept jingle jangling away. Little, little baby whiting, tiny little thing. Fish is a fish though. I'm making this my last cast on both rods. I'm gonna leave them soaking now till three o'clock. It's 20 past two. See if I can pick something up on the way up to the top of the tide. Ipswich Town are playing at home today, so I know traffic is gonna be absolutely manic if I don't sort of get home before that finishes. So I want to do that. I've had a lovely day out. Like I say, last cast lottery, see if I can get anything on these two. You gotta be in it to win it. You gotta try, you gotta give it a go. Maybe a little bit early for the race, who knows? But I say the conditions were good today, so if they were about, I'm pretty sure I'd have picked one up. But yeah, I'm gonna go and put this little bubble back and let's see if this last cast produces anything. Well, there we have it. Top of the tide's fast approaching, nearly three o'clock. Those two rods have had a 40 minute soak. And I'm gonna call it a day. That wind is getting really chilly. It's swung again, coming straight off the sea. Yeah, I'm gonna go home, get something to eat and watch some football, I reckon. Right, so I'll bring them in a little while. If there's anything else on them, I'll obviously show you the picture, a video of it. But not a bad day, to be honest with you. What, two whiting, a doggy. Not great, not gonna set the world on fire, but it is still March. Obviously, Ray's with a target. Didn't get the target fish, but it'll happen very soon. There's gonna be more videos coming from the beach and obviously from lakes as well, but I'm gonna be really hitting the sea fishing hard this year. There'll be a lot more videos coming out Nighttime, daytime, traveling around the country. I've already got like ideas planned with certain people in different parts of the country, so I'll be going out and banging them videos out. And let's see if we can get this channel rocking again, get some fish on camera for you, and get addicted to angling back on the road. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, really appreciate it. Um, if you like the video, give it a like as always. If you fancy subscribing, hit the subscribe button, it costs nothing. But I'm going to leave that there. You take care of yourselves, and I'll see you by the water very soon.